Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and yes, uh, we're back at it again with MDT uh, 2013 update one, pushing out Windows 10. I think the last video that I did with you guys was um, I did a customization of Windows 10, and we captured it. Uh, we actually captured it inside a partition that I created within my VMware infrastructure. Uh, I dropped it inside a capture folder. It took forever, but it was completely done. Uh, is about the uh, 3.5 gigs, 3.38 gigs, which is pretty big. So on this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take our custom reference image that we took, that we installed all this Visual C++ into, and uh, we are going to import it inside our MDT, so, which is pretty easy. So within my operating system node, I'm going to right-click. I'm going to create a new folder. So if you guys have been tuning in with a lot of my MDT stuff, I love creating folders because it keeps me nice and organized. And I'm going to do, let's say, Windows 10 customize all right hit next next or actually i should have i should have said captured it makes more sense if i just say capture right and this was a 64 bit awesome cool so within here what's going to happen is i'm going to right click on it and i'm going to import an operating system now we're not going to do a full set of source files and we're not going to do a windows deployment service image what we're going to do is a custom image because that's what we captured on the last video so we're going to click on that we're going to go to next. And where is this particular WIM file? Now, I dropped it inside my D drive. So I'm going to go to this PC. And we're going to go into the D drive. Now, if you don't have an extra partition and you just left everything as the default, most likely you could go to your C drive, deployment share. And within the deployment share, there's a capture folder. So if you didn't make any modifications during your task sequence that you wanted your capture to be deployed somewhere else, most likely this is where your capture image is placed. But for me, I've told it to go inside the D drive. And there it goes. And let's click on open. And we're going to go to next. Now it says specify operating system setup files. Uh, setup files are not needed. I don't need anything. Okay. So I'm going to click on next. Uh, the destination, leave the destination as is. Next. Nice little summary. Next. Next. Right now it's uploading, it's processing. And once the import is completed, hopefully everything goes well. Uh, we should have a we should have our capture image within our MDT operating system node, and the next thing that we have to do is get inside our task sequence and uh, create the task sequence to push it out. All right, guys, so we're done with the importing our capture image inside our MDT. Super excited! Uh, the process was completely successful. That's always a great thing uh, what, for us IT professionals. Uh, so we're gonna click on finish, and it's gonna refresh, and there it goes. Awesome, beautiful. So the next thing that we need to do is uh, I'm going to go inside my task sequence node and I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call it uh, Windows 10 Capture X64 TS. TS basically stands for task sequence for those that do not understand that. And click next, next, and finish. Then within here, I'm going to right click and we're going to create a new task sequence. From here, this is really up to you how you want to customize it. So I'm going to do win 10 dash cap. Cap basically means capture. Uh, and we're going to do x64001. Uh, TS. And then from here, we're going to do uh, Windows 10 capture x64 task sequence version let's go for 1.0 right uh this is really up to you you don't need to follow me on this uh this is you know is your style so you can name it whatever you want i always have problems naming stuff like this but you know whatever as long as you understand it and take good notes so i'm going to click on next our uh template is going to be a standard client task sequence and we're going to click on next on that and from here, we're going to pick our operating system. Now, we're going to go into the node that we just created, the Windows 10 Captured. And we're going to pick our captured image that we caught on the last video. And we're going to click on Next. And I'm not going to specify a key for this um, for this video, so I'm going to click on Next. Operating settings is really up to you. Uh, full name, BTNHD. Organization, BTNHD. And let's go into my home page. There it goes. Click Next. Uh, assign an administrative password. Make sure you remember it. 
Now, this administrator password is the password for your local administrator. It's not your admin password for your domain, okay? This is for your local administrative account within the computer. So we're going to click on next on that. Nice little summary. Next. It's going to process it. It shouldn't take no more than 10 seconds. It's real fast. Click finish. And there goes our task sequence. So this is our task sequence. Now, you can leave everything as is. If you want, if you have more updates or let's say the updates that you pushed out on your captured image is pretty old and you want the current ones, hey, when you push out your capture image to a new machine, you can actually go inside the task sequence and say, hey, I want you to go inside my WSUS server and grab those uh, new updates to push it to the machine. Or if you have any customizations that you need to do, like pushing out fonts or images and stuff, you could do it here. But I'm going to leave everything as is. So I'm going to press OK. I'm not going to change anything inside the custom settings INI file. I'm going to leave everything the way it was. And the next thing is update the deployment. We're going to click on next, next. And once the deployment is completed or the deployment is up to date, uh, as always, I'm going to go inside my WDS. Uh, let's launch my WDS. And I like to at least um, update my boot images. So I'm going to minimize this. It's finished. Awesome. Click on finish. I'm going to minimize my deployment workbench and we're going to maximize my WDS. I'm going to right click on my 86 replace. I don't know if this is best practice, but this is something that I'm so used to doing. So don't uh, if you guys have, you know, another opinion about this, let me know. Uh, so I'm just going to replace it. There it goes. Once the 86 boot image is replaced, I'm going to do the same thing with the 64 bit. Once that's completed, I'm going to restart my WDS just to make sure it's nice and healthy and it restarts because uh, I've had problems in the past that it doesn't restart and I had to like troubleshoot it. So I'm going to do the same thing, replace it, browse. And if you guys are wondering, the boot images are actually located inside your deployment share and it's inside that folder called boot. So it's uh, deployment share, boot, and there goes your WIM image, your boot images. So I'm going to do the 64-bit. Click next, 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 and just let it do its thing. Okay, so the replacement of boot images are completed. Happy about that. So I'm going to right-click on my WDS node. I'm going to go to all tasks. I'm just going to restart it. I don't know if this is best practice, but this is what I like to do. Uh, just to make sure everything is nice and healthy. Once I get this dialog box saying that successfully restarted your WDS, and I got that nice little play green button, that means everything should be working, right? Cross the fingers. So, uh, as you know, I'm, I'm always working on a virtual environment. So, I'm going to go to file, create a new virtual machine. Uh, before I even do that, I wanna, I'm going to cancel this out. And I want to show you guys. I'm going to go inside uh, here. My VMs. This is temp. I have anything. I don't have anything inside this BJ dash temp. I'm going to copy this because this is where I'm going to drop all that information in. Okay. So let's expand that. I'm going to go to File, New Virtual Machine, Next, Next. Uh, it's somewhat like a Windows 8. I have to update my my workstation anyway. I got to, Next. I'm going to call it BJ Dash Temp. I'm going to paste that path. Again, you guys saw there was nothing inside that, that folder. Click on Next. Uh, let's give it something small. Let's give it 25. That's pretty small. Again, it's really plain Jane. It doesn't have an, a lot of applications or anything. Click on next. Finish. Awesome. And we're going to hit power. And I am going to click inside the virtual machine and F12 like a madman so I could pixie boot into it. And I'm going to pick our 64 bit because we're pushing out a 64 bit operating system. So that's, that's the environment that we want to get into. Hit enter. Uh, once all this is done, because I didn't touch none of the custom settings, INI file, all the bootstrap stuff, a lot of stuff is going to be automated. Okay, The same process that we did on the last video, it's going to happen here. The only difference is I'm going to be choosing a different task sequence. I'm not going to be choosing the one to capture a reference. I'm going to be choosing the one to push out the reference capture image that we caught on the first video. Uh, and once that's done, uh, we're just going to let it ride and see if how well... It deploys. All right, guys, I'm already part of the task sequence dialog box. It popped up, and it's time for me to choose my task sequence. So I'm going to choose the one that we created together. This is the naming scheme that I, I did. So let's uh, click on that. 
and we are going to click on next I'm not capturing it so do not capture an image and the only reason that I'm getting this is because I'm still using the original uh, custom settings I and I settings that I did on the last video but you can always change that click on next and that's it just let it ride let it do its magic uh, once it's completed right now it's formatting the partition once it formats the partition it's gonna push out the operating system once it pushes out the operating system it's gonna give you like a time frame so right now it's installing the operating system is applying it uh, and then this is when it's gonna give you a nice little estimate of how long it's going to take uh, because it's such a small operating system the WIM image is only about three three point thirty eight gigs right so I would assume maybe five minutes 10 minutes the most because I don't really have a up oh, see 925 around 10 minutes it should be done so I'm gonna let this ride uh, and once it completed uh, I think we're done all right guys so our captured uh, deployment image that we did on the last video is completed and uh, if you guys did not change anything within your custom settings dot ini file your machine once it was deployed the image was deployed it shut down and the reason why is because that's the last thing that we did on our captured reference image so just start it up and once you start it up uh, I caught a glitch this is a glitch this is really weird I don't know why this is happening but remember within the task sequence I provided a password and I, I was using the password that I entered I'm not I know I'm not crazy and I specifically uh, created a password and I tried to log in and it couldn't log in now the password that I was able to log into uh, was the password within my domain which is weird so that's how I was able to log into the machine so if you guys are having issues logging into your uh, deployed image and you're using the password that you assign within your task sequence try to use your domain admin password uh, and see if you're able to log in or the pass or use the password that your account that has full access to your deployment use that password and see if you're able to log in all right guys so one thing before I let you guys go I want to check out the control panel so let's go inside the control panel let's just do control panel and it goes it's going inside the control panel and the only reason that I'm going inside the control panel is, is because I want to go inside the add and remove software section and see if the visual C++ stuff was installed again when we captured our reference image that stuff was installed so us pushing it out it should be there so we are going to programs and features and as you can see all the applications are deployed It is 927 that was the day that we did our custom reference build so it looks like it worked with no problem hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, video leave comments right below don't forget about hitting that like button because it does support this guy as well as the MDT stuff and I catch you guys on the next one peace out